This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. Many years ago, there was an Israeli, Chaim, in his 50s, who had come to America for a wedding. And Chaim was driving on the Brooklyn Queens Expressway when suddenly a car came from behind, racing towards him. Chaim didn't even notice it. The car crashed into his. The next moment, everything went dark, and he couldn't see or hear anything. He was taken to the hospital, put on life support. And his family in Israel was called, and they flew in to be by his bedside. Two weeks later, there was a Jew named Moshe Yosef, who was always looking to help fellow Jews. Whether it was delivering food, picking up medication, or raising money, he was always there. And someone called Moshe Yosef and said there's this Israeli family in a hospital in New Jersey. They don't really know anyone in America. They don't have any food for Shabbos. So he quickly jumped in his car, filled up all kinds of food for Shabbos, and drove to the hospital to meet the family who had flown in from Israel. He saw the wife and children and the whole family sitting around the bed of Chaim who had been in the accident, and they really looked depressed. So Moshe Yosef said, Would it be okay if he goes into the room and tells Chaim a story of the great tzaddik, Reb of Kerestir? The family said, "You You know, you can tell him a story, but he doesn't hear anything. He's completely unconscious. He doesn't know what's going on around him. But Moshe Yosef said, Well, if that's the case, then... It wouldn't hurt to tell him the story. So he comes into the room. He sits down next to Chaim. He says, Chaim, I'm going to tell you a story of the great tzaddik, Reb Shaila ben Moshe of Kirstir. Back in Hungary, there was a boy whose name was Moshe Weiss. And this boy studied in yeshiva. And as it happened sometimes, somebody spread a false story about him. And everybody started making fun of him. And he had a reputation where people avoided him when it was just for nonsense, it wasn't even for a real reason. No matter where he went, this reputation followed him, and it got him more and more depressed, until somebody said to him, you know what, Moshe, you should go to the Tzaddik Reb Maybe he can help you. And so Moshe goes to Kirastir, and he sees there's a huge line of people waiting to go in and speak with the Tzaddik. (laughs) So he gets in the back of the line, and he's waiting there, and he's waiting there, and the line isn't moving. So he says to somebody in front of him, what's going on here? How come we've been waiting here a long time? The line isn't moving at all. So the man says to him, the Rebbe won't receive anyone until somebody by the name of Moshe Weiss shows up here. And so Moshe, whose name was Moshe Weiss, says, wait a minute, my name is Moshe Weiss. The guy said, really? You're Moshe Weiss, so go on to the Rebbe so we can get this line moving. And as he's moving towards the front of the line, everybody says, no, 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 what's going on? He says, I'm Moshe Weiss. Ah, you're Moshe Weiss? No, get moving, let's go. So he goes into the Rebbe, and Reb Shaila lifts up his arms and looks him in the eye and says, Moshe, Moshe, I've been waiting for you for so long. I know what you're going through, and I know how you're suffering. I'll tell you what you need to do. He tells him the name of a specific town. He says, move to this town, and there's an elderly man there. Go and move in with him. Help him, and everything will be good for you. So Moshe is shocked that this whole thing is happening, and he looks at Reb Shaila. And he says, that's it. And he says, Moshe, Moshe, wait a minute. Remember one thing. I will always be with you, Moshe. I will never abandon you, Moshe. I promise you, not in this world and not the world to come. So Moshe left the room feeling like such a mensch. And just like Reb Shaila said, he moved to the town, found the old man, moved in with him, helped him, and everything went well for him. He was successful in business. He got married. He began his life. Then unfortunately... There was the Holocaust, but miraculously he survived. And after the war, Moshe and his wife, they moved to Canada. But when he got to Canada, he realized that being Moshe Weiss wasn't going to serve him. So he became Howard Weiss, and he abandoned Tor and Mitzvot, and began a new lifestyle of a successful businessman that works seven days a week, eats non-kosher food, doesn't wear a kippah or tzitziot. He knew he was a Jew, but he didn't keep Torah and Mitzvot anymore. And many years later, on a Friday, 
Howard Weiss has a heart attack and he's taken to the hospital. The doctors called his wife and they said, listen, it's very serious what happened to your husband. He has maybe two, three hours to live and that's it. So prepare yourself because in a few hours, he's not going to be here anymore. So the wife is trying to gather herself and digest this crazy news that had just been given to her. And 15 minutes before Shabbos starts, she gets a phone call. She answers the phone. Hello? And he says, yes, this is Howard speaking. And Howard's wife says, wait a minute, Howard, you're about to die. What do you mean you're calling me and speaking? He said, never mind that. I'm perfectly fine. I'm sitting here in the hospital. Now come and pick me up. So she drove to the hospital. She goes in the lobby. She couldn't believe her eyes. There's her husband, Howard, sitting there, healthy, normal, as if nothing had happened to him. So she said, Howard, I don't understand what happened here. And Howard said, listen, listen carefully. I had almost passed to the next world when suddenly I had a dream. The holy tzaddik, Reb Shaila, appeared to me in my dream. And I said to him, Reb Shaila, Rebbe, you promised me that you'd always be with me in this world and the world to come. So how are you letting me die? I'm so young. I still have so much life to live. I have a wife and children. Please, Rebbe, you promised me. You promised that you'd always be with me, and now you're going to let me die? And the Rebbe looked deep into my eyes, and he said, I told you that I will always be with you. But when I was speaking to you, you were Moshe Weiss. You were a Yid that kept Torah and mitzvahs. And now you're a new person who calls himself Howard. He eats treif. He is a Mechal Shabbos. Doesn't keep Shabbos. He said, with Moshe, I will always be with. Howard, I don't know who he is. And so I said, Rebbe, I promise you, from this Shabbos, I will keep Shabbos. I will wear a kippah. I will call myself again by the name Moshe. You'll see, I'll be Moshe Weiss, just like the one that you promised you would always be with. And the great tzaddik, Reb Shaila, he said to me, if that's the case, Moshe, then you will be healthy and have a long and healthy life. And so here I am. I'm perfectly fine. Come and get me, because tonight we're keeping Shabbos. And so that's the story that Moshe Yosef told the family of Chaim the Israeli that was laying there in the hospital bed. And he ended by saying, with Hashem's help, by tomorrow morning, in the merit of Reb Shaile ben Moshe of Kirastir, Chaim will have a Refu Ashlima, a full recovery. And on Moti Shabbos, Moshe Yosef received a phone call from one of the family members. And he said, Moshe Yosef, you won't believe this. At one o'clock in the morning, Chaim woke up. He's alive. He's here. And Moshe Yosef said, You see, that's the power of a story of a great tzaddik, like Reb Shaila of Kerastir. <laughs> One more little vort. This is a bit of musr, a bit of rebuke from Reb Dovale of Tolna. Once he came late to his tish and excused himself to the Hasidim. Sorry that he's late. The Hasidim said, no, Rebbe, what were you doing? And the Rebbe said, Mashiach had come to him. And that was the reason that Reb Davidel of Tolna was late. So the Hasidim said, really, Rebbe, you met Mashiach on the way and that's why you're late for the tish? And the Rebbe said, yes. Would you like to know what Mashiach asked me? The Hasidim, of course, they want to know. So he said, Mashiach asked, should I come now and redeem Klal Yisrael, the whole Jewish people? Or should I wait until more of the Yidin, more of the Jews have done tshuva, have fixed what they needed to fix? If I come now, Mashiach said, there will be some souls that will never be able to be redeemed. And so Reb David of Tolna said to Mashiach, it's better to wait until all of the souls are ready for you to come. And one of the Hasidim there, he said, Rebbe, isn't it better that Mashiach come now? I mean, we've been waiting so, for so long for Mashiach, and we've all done the work that we needed to do. Why do we need to wait for those few souls that haven't done their fixing yet? And the Rebbe said to this Hasid, you, my friend, are one of the souls that has not been rectified yet if Mashiach were to come now. And so when I told Mashiach not to come, 
I had you in mind. And now, Bezat Hashem, when you do tshuva, maybe then Mashiach will be able to come. A bit of harsh, musr, but sometimes musr can be so sweet. We should take it in a good way, Bezat Hashem, my sweetest friends. Everybody in their own place. To do the fixing that we need to do. To go higher and higher. To help one another. Until the great day comes when Mashiach is finally ready to appear. La 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 la